Welcome back to another Anesthesia step-by-step -step tutorial. Today we're looking at anaphylaxis. Up there with malignant hypothermia, anaphylaxis has to be one of the most feared critical incidences among anaesthetists. It is a rapidly evolving, life-threatening, IgE-mediated systemic hypersensitivity reaction forming a triad of cardiovascular collapse, bronchospasm, and swelling, flushing, or itching of the skin and mucosa. It's pretty much the first diagnosis to rule out if you have any of the following features. An unexplained tachycardia, hypotension, high airway pressures, or a new swelling, rash, or flushing, or even just a sudden unexplained cardiac arrest. If you're in doubt, it is far better to assume that it is anaphylaxis than it is to miss it. The first thing you do is call for help. Ask a member of theatre staff to pull the emergency buzzer because you will need more hands on deck as soon as possible. Try and make a note of the time and ideally ask another team member to be a scribe and write down events as they occur. When other people arrive, ask for the arrest trolley and the anaphylaxis treatment and investigation pack which most hospitals have a version of. And finally, ask for the quick reference handbook. Don't ask the person to give it to you, ask them to open it at anaphylaxis and then say out loud to you the steps in order. The most important thing to do next is to try and remove the trigger if possible, otherwise the reaction will simply continue. Often the reaction is to a drug that has already been given, however it might be being caused by an infusion that can be stopped or by something touching the skin such as chlorhexidine or latex that can be removed. Most people don't realise that a lot of central lines have a sulphur drug style coating which can trigger reaction in those with allergies. Then we return to our familiar step of supplying high flow 100% oxygen. If the patient is intubated, check that the airway remains patent and if they're not intubated, intubate them as soon as possible as the airway is only going to get more edematous if this is a true anaphylactic reaction. Elevate the legs and ensure good intravenous or intraosseous access. Check the blood pressure. If it's below 50 systolic, instruct a team member to start compressions. Hypotension is the most urgent issue to resolve. And if you only remember one thing from this video, make it this. The dose for adrenaline in anaphylaxis is 50 micrograms IV or IO. To make this, you can grab an adrenaline mini jet off the crash trolley. This contains one in 10,000 adrenaline, or one milligram in 10 milliliters. Draw up one mil of this into a separate 10 mil syringe and dilute it in nine mils of normal saline. Your new syringe is now 10 mics per mil, and you can give five mics of it as a bolus. If you don't have IV access, then the dose is 10 times this intramuscularly, and you'll need half a mil of one milligram per mil adrenaline and this comes in little glass vials. In paediatrics, the dose is one microgram per kilo. Repeat these boluses every couple of minutes as necessary, and if you're needing more than three boluses, consider an adrenaline infusion. Doses are listed in the quick reference handbook. You can also give any other vasopressors at this point that might help the situation, and glucagon if adrenaline resistant hypotension, or if the patient is beta blocked. Having given your first dose of adrenaline as a priority, you can then give them a fluid challenge of 20 mils per kilogram and repeat as needed to improve the blood pressure, and then consider your other drugs for anaphylaxis, such as chlorphenamine and hydrocortisone. Hopefully by now the situation will be resolving. If there is persistent bronchospasm, turn to that page of the QRH. The same goes for cardiac arrest. Assuming the patient has started to improve and begins to stabilise, you can then think about testing things like serum triptase. Finally, the patient is likely to need to abandon the surgery if it hasn't happened yet and transfer to intensive care for ongoing care and very cautious extubation once the symptoms have resolved completely.